Anne was married, as Mary had been, to a foreign prince, but her husband, Prince George of Denmark, was no William of Orange. He was a lazy alcoholic, and while Anne was willing to let him be naturalised as an Englishman and notional head of the army and navy, she was queen and he was a subject. No married queen had ever ruled alone before Anne, and she played it very regally. She was very keen on the ceremonial and quasi-magical position of royalty, holding ceremonies where she touched people with scrofula, swollen neck glands from tuberculosis. It was called the king's evil, and the power to cure it was supposedly the magical sign of true royalty. She was the last monarch to try it. Kings had male favourites, Anne had female favourites. The first and closest was Sarah Churchill, the wife of the Duke of Marlborough. They called each other by pet names. The Queen was Mrs Freeman, Sarah was Mrs Morley. Mrs Morley's husband was England's leading military commander and the architect of a stunning victory at the Battle of Blenheim that placed England in a dominant position in Europe. But England's Queen did not decide who to fight or when to fight or how to fight. Politics was no longer really her business. Even when in 1707 England and Scotland were formally and permanently united by the Act of Union, it was not Anne's doing, but Parliament's. Anne did, it was true, refuse to sign one Act of Parliament at around that time, but it was a very minor technical issue, not a real challenge to the power of the politicians. Her life was spent more playing cards, chatting, being ill, and having 19 pregnancies. These pregnancies were watched with fascination by an elderly lady in Hanover, Sophia, the Electress Duchess of Brunswick-Lüneburg. She was James I's granddaughter, and because there were so few Protestants of the blood royal left alive, she was, by Act of Parliament, next in line to the throne, if Anne died childless, and if she lived long enough. One by one, Anne's pregnancies came and went, 14 miscarriages and stillbirths, five live births, but by the time Anne was widowed in 1708, all of them were dead. Sophia, aged 78, now just had to outlive the 43-year-old Anne to become Queen of England. Anne was a sick woman. Sophia was tough as an old boot. She knew she could do it. But in 1714, Sophia received an outrageous letter from Anne. Anne had somehow got the impression that Sophia was going to secretly send her son George to England in some kind of plot, and she told Sophia that would not be allowed. Sophia, now 84, was shocked, and the shock killed her, just nine weeks before Queen Anne died. Sophia had failed, but her son George would now be king, 